This is the Google Pixel 7 and when it came out there was quite a bit of hype about it. Some people calling it the iPhone killer while others saying it's hands down the best uh, Android phone you can buy. But does it come even close to these uh, incredible statements? Let's find out but spoiler alert it's not all roses. Oh wait it's 2023 and there is nothing to unbox anymore is there? I mean look at this. Kidding aside, there really isn't that much to unbox, as Apple has set the standard and every other manufacturer has gladly followed. All we find inside the box is the phone, a USB-C cable, a USB-A to USB-C adapter, no charger, no 3.5 jack to USB-C adapter, nothing. Thanks Google! Now design is always a subjective thing. I may like uh, lime green uh, Lamborghinis and you may like bright red uh, Ferraris. Um, however, me personally, I think Google nailed it with the design on this one. It is not radically changed, but it is an improvement over the 6. It's also a distinctive look and people will notice what phone you have. But probably most importantly for me, it's the fact that it's kind of a breath of fresh air among all the iPhones and Android phones out there. I really like the camera bar on the back with its cyborg look and it also serves a practical purpose. The phone will lay very nicely on a flat surface, no weird rocking on the table because of a corner camera bump like other phones. Also the camera bar makes it really easy to hold in your hand by resting your finger on it. What is not subjective but very objective I'd say is the build quality and materials used and here we have a solid phone. IP68 water resistance, Gorilla Glass Victus on front and back and 100% recycled aluminium or aluminum depending on which side of the world you live in. It's matte on the Pixel 7 and polished on the 7 Pro however I like the matte one better and it will not show scratches as well either. And why I was saying it's an improvement from the 6. On the 7 we have a very cohesive build with the camera bar and the sides being one body rather than being two separate things. I know it's details but it's the details that make it great. Available colors are lemongrass, snow and obsidian. As you can see I got the snow one and I don't know what to say I am usually a black phone person but what good does that do when uh, all you can see is ugly smudges and fingerprints on it so yeah that's kind of what convinced me to try a different color on the polar opposites of the spectrum uh, but yeah I actually love the color combination of uh, this white and uh, silver look. I also got the white or chalk Google case together with a Spigen glass screen protector. And the good thing I did because I managed to drop it and crack it. The screen is a beautiful 6.3 inches HDR10 plus AMOLED display made by Samsung. And that is a great news because Samsung is after all the leading manufacturer for AMOLED displays. And fun fact, it's even making the iPhone display. The Pixel 7 has a 90 Hz refresh rate screen, which I say is perfect because you don't really see that much difference with 120 Hz and those do drain the battery a lot faster. Also, it's a lot more noticeable the jump from 60 to 90 Hz than the one from 90 to 120 Hz and just makes overall uh, things look smoother and snappier. This one is a flat screen, no curved edges, which some people like, some people don't. The 7 Pro does have it a little bit curved, but not very dramatic. I actually think I would have preferred that because coming from a Samsung Galaxy S10 with very aggressive uh, curved edges, this now looks to me like it has has huge borders which is not exactly true but you know my perspective has been shifted where it does have a little bit of a thick border is the chin actually and yeah it's it's a bit thicker than the rest of the edges can't have it all the resolution is 1080 by 2400 pixels 20 by 9 which doesn't sound like a lot I mean 1080p is basically just uh, full HD in a world where everything is 4k or 8k or 12k but for a smartphone screen, it's really perfectly adequate. And again, anything above that would just drain the battery faster. So smart choice, Google. 
One other important thing about the screen is the luminosity and how usable it is in um, bright sunlight outside. But I'm happy to report it is great, super bright and usable. Here too, the pixel is on par with the rest of the flagships. 1000 nits or 1400 nits peak. Yes, the iPhone 14 does advertise 2000 nits peak, but it's capable of that for literally just a few seconds before it overheats. So it's more of a marketing really, as always with Apple. What I'll say is it's not a two days battery kind of phone, but it's a comfortable one full day, uh, which was not the case with my uh, old uh, S10. I would have to uh, charge it throughout the day. I can use the Pixel 7 for navigation and music while driving and other normal use case scenarios, and it will still last for the entire day, which is really all we can hope for in a smartphone nowadays with the current battery technology. The battery has 4,355 milliamps, which is not a lot less than uh, the Big Brother, which has uh, 5,000. 20 watts charging speed is not going to blow anyone's mind, but it's a decent speed for this kind of a battery size. It also has wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. Nice to have. There is a reason why I didn't want to rush this uh, Pixel 7 review, other than laziness that is. But when the Pixel 6 came out with its new Tensor Core made by Google, everyone was really excited about it. But then it quickly became apparent when you are implementing new things, there are inherited risks with that. In short, the Pixel 6 was a buggy mess at launch. And not only at launch, but for months to come before Google could address them all through uh, software fixes. However, I am happy to say that I haven't seen such issues or weirdness on the 7 for the most part and it's a very polished experience. I did have in the beginning an issue occur once or twice uh, where I couldn't switch from my Wi-Fi internet to my mobile one when I was leaving home. So that wasn't very pleasant because I needed to use navigation and I couldn't and I had to reboot it to fix that. I'm not sure what the issue was, uh, what happened there. Maybe it was related to my phone operator as well. No idea, but it didn't happen in months, so we good now. Also, the buttons from the drop-down notification bar sometimes would appear to do nothing when you press them. So like they're not triggering, they're not turning, you know, on and off. But the action was actually registered, it's just the animation that didn't show. On paper, it's really not the bleeding edge of technology if we're talking about hardware with uh, Google's Tensor 2 chip consistently losing to uh, other flagships out there if we're talking about synthetic benchmarks. But that's pretty much where the bad news ends because in reality, you'll never feel like the phone is sluggish or in need of more power. Uh, the 7 has 8 gigabytes of RAM and the 7 Pro has 12 gigabytes of RAM, which is more than plenty. And if you want, you can play any kind of latest games uh, on these devices without any issues. Rather than focusing on raw power, uh, Google's Tensor 2 is really focused on all things AI. Recognizing human speech, uh, filtering out background noise, live translating languages, speech to text, and of course, processing of videos and photos. We'll see more on these in just just a second. Also pretty snappy is the unlocking of the device. You can even use both fingerprint and face unlock combined, which is great because it will unlock it with whichever registers faster. As I was mentioning, hardware is not necessarily what one should focus on when it comes to the Pixel. Google after all being a software company but they have managed to tackle most problems smartphones face nowadays without throwing too much hardware at it, but instead doing it all through software in a very elegant and cohesive way, I'd say. Which is exactly what other Android phones lack when we compare them to the iPhone, for example. Um, some manufacturers will implement the craziest bleeding uh, edge tech uh, in their smartphones, but more often than not, they are half-baked, poorly implemented and don't even solve the problem they wanted to solve. So in that sense, I really do appreciate what Google is able to achieve, even if they don't have the highest tier of hardware. The Google Assistant, for example, is uh, present on all phones, right? But here it's so seamlessly implemented throughout the uh, operating system. And also it's more powerful than ever. So I'm just gonna show you live uh, to see if this uh, live transcribing thing is accurate or not. 
So this is a test of the Google Pixel 7. It's a new smartphone that came out and I hope it's uh, good. So yeah, you tell me. You can also add live captions on any video that's playing on your phone. Welcome, welcome everybody. Zach Quartz here with RevZilla and this is another episode of Daily Rider where we learn about bikes as we ride. Our guest today is Ducati's Street Fighter V2. That is just about a 1000cc Ducati twin with a full suite of electronics, a flat handlebar and an MSRP of e Now, what's impressive to me is that not only did it get everything right, including the numbers, but also it recognizes uh, names and brands, so the result is pretty good. Now, granted, some of the cool features the Pixel 7 brings are location dependent, like call screening, for example. Uh, so if you don't live in one of the following countries, and this was the only reason you wanted the Pixel 4, sorry to burst your bubble, I guess. Not unique to the Pixel, but integrated and very nicely implemented, the adaptive battery charging and bedtime mode. It has a sort of Shazam integrated and it's gonna tell you what songs are playing around you. You can deactivate it of course if you want. Also I appreciate the little snake graphic for music playing. There's also the themed icons option you can toggle on if you want to have a simplified and cohesive look. Um, the icons and all the settings in the notification bar will follow the color theme of your selected wallpaper. So yes, in a way, the Pixel is the iPhone of the Android world, being sophisticated and minimalistic at the same time, with a very smooth and polished uh, experience overall. Also, you will be the first in line to get Android updates and new features for years to come. Inevitably, at some point, you've probably heard someone say the Pixel takes the best photos out of all smartphones out there. And like with everything, it's not that simple. But yes, the computational photography on this thing is pretty amazing. And what I'd say is the best thing about it is the results are very consistent with specific traits and features in the photos, uh, which people who know what pixel photos look like will probably recognize them. So yeah, some people really love the pixel look, but I don't know if everyone, <laughs> probably not. So I've taken probably thousands of photos with the Pixel 7 at this point. And there are a few things that stood out to me regarding that Pixel look. I'd say the Pixel photos are moderately high contrast, sharp photos, very nice colors but not too saturated perfectly well lit in most of the cases good exposure and hdr but it doesn't overdo it and it isn't afraid to leave something in the dark completely depending on the scenario but the ai does a pretty good job really now why i say this is because i feel like other phones like samsung's for example are way too generous with the colors and the saturation and also brings up the shadows very aggressively like it's afraid of the dark and uh, the result are pretty washed out blacks in the end and to a certain point uh, i think iphones as well take some photos that sometimes are a bit too bright also it might be my favorite thing about this camera but it's capable of capturing true blacks like my cat which is very difficult to capture as in reality her fur is like venta black paint absorbing all the light another thing i really like about this phone is the big sensor and what that means is you can get some natural background blur or bokeh no fake software made background blur required and that is a big plus for me so to get a bit into the specs as well on the back the pixel 7 has a 50 megapixel sensor f1.9 25 millimeters wide lens and also a 12 megapixels uh, ultra wide on the Pixel 7 Pro, we get a pretty cool addition of a periscope lens, 120 millimeters, which is capable of 5x optical zoom. So in theory, for the standard Pixel, you don't even get a 2x zoom, but there's actually more than that. So the Pixel doesn't actually export 50 megapixels photos uh, to begin with. 
Um, Apple does a very similar thing, Samsung as well, DJI with their drones. Uh, it's called pixel binning and they combine pixels into a bigger pixel for a uh, larger light gathering surface making the photos uh, better overall uh, and you probably don't need 50 megapixels photos to begin with but uh, the exported uh, photo is actually a 12 megapixels uh, photo and so with a pixel when you zoom to 2x it actually crops in the middle of the sensor so the resulting image is really not bad if there's one thing that uh, the pixel camera is known for for a couple of years now it's the night photos capabilities and i do fully agree with this the nighttime photos coming out of it are amazing and just right no weirdness going on and uh, more often than not you'll see way more details captured by the pixel than uh, you're able to see with your eyes at night it's pretty impressive a feature which might come in handy sometimes is the new photo on blur feature uh, and it works pretty nicely uh, it's not going to work all the time it depends on what kind of photo you have also it doesn't have to be a photo taken by the pixel it works on any image one thing which the pixel 7 improved on is the video part which in the past wasn't that great now i think the 4k recordings coming out of the main sensor are very nice and closing the gap with the iphone's video capability which is probably still a bit better though plenty of detail and very nice colors the focus does a good job also most of the times uh, it's fast responsive and usually focuses on the right thing they've also added more stabilization options such as active but it can only record in full HD with this option and I don't think the difference in stabilization uh, is that big to justify the loss in uh, resolution and sharpness there's also cinematic blur for videos but I didn't even bother testing that as I've seen it from other people that it's just terrible. <laughs> the selfie camera is a 10.8 megapixel sensor, f2.2 aperture and it does a pretty good job. Aperture and it does a pretty good job in my opinion. Um, it's also capable of 4K at 60 FPS max, but that's pretty standard nowadays. Uh, but yeah, what, what I'm impressed is how it manages to keep a good dynamic range. And uh, as you can see now, it's a pretty difficult scenario. Like half my face is uh, kind of burned out and half is in shadow. If I do this, it also looks pretty natural. If I do this, now, it also does a pretty good job at keeping my face illuminated. Now, it doesn't look great because, uh, you know, it's a pretty bad scenario. But yeah, I think it does a pretty good job. But overall, for sure, a very strong video capabilities. One more thing I'd like to discuss here is, should you upgrade and go straight for the 7 Pro? And honestly, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, sure, five times optical zoom is nice, but what you get in addition for the extra price is really not that much. It's just mainly for that uh, zoom and a bigger screen at 6.7 inches, which not everyone wants, by the way, but at uh, $899 for the 128 gigabytes, pretty low storage also, versus $599. I think the Pixel 7 standard is uh, the best buy for me. It has very decent speakers. The top speaker and the bottom firing one work together like on most phones uh, nowadays. One very nice thing about the Pixel 7 is uh, the internal storage is lightning fast with UFS uh, 3.1 and also it has a USB-C uh, 3.2 connector so you'll have really really fast uh, transferring speeds. This one is a bit random but if you are into that sort of thing uh, it has very firm and clicky buttons. You can also double tap the back of the phone to turn on the light or some uh, other action. We sadly live in the era of uh, no headphone jack and I know this is not a Google specific thing but it did add to the cost and fuss that previously I didn't have to deal with. So because it didn't include in the box a 3.5mm jack adapter uh, I had to use others so I had this laying around, I tried it, it didn't work. I also got an Apple one 
I tried it. Uh, it works for headphones. It doesn't really work for microphones or at least not all microphones. Sometimes for the same microphone, it doesn't work depending on the day. <laughs> so I know this is not the Google specific adapter, but the Google one is pretty hard to come by unless you uh, live in a Google supported country like the US, uh, UK, France, I don't know. But for the rest of the world, it's pretty hard to find. So uh, yeah. So what I ended up doing is get an audio interface from Rode. This is the AI Micro. And it's pretty cool, honestly. On this side, it has USB-C. And on the other side, it has uh, two microphone inputs and an audio output for headphones monitoring. So I know this is not related to the Pixel, but it's, I, I really like it. It's pretty cool, uh, if you ask me. So if you face the same situation, the same problem, this is what I did to uh, deal with it. <laughs> which yes, may be inconvenient for some users, but honestly, I miss it less than I expected it to because of that very fast um, internal storage. A third possible uh, negative side with the pixels in general, it's not this model in particular, but you may find that it's a bit harder to, to get third-party accessories, um, cases and things like that for the pixel than it is to get for the iPhone or the Samsung Galaxies out there. So yeah, it's not really a con of the phone, but something to keep in mind. So who is the Pixel 7 for? Well, I would say for anyone really. In the past, the Pixels used to be the go-to phone for the camera and in particular for the photos coming out of them. And yes, that is still the case, but not just that. Uh, Google has added many quality of life things uh, for a broader audience and also has a more refined experience than ever before. With Google being able to decide everything about this phone top to bottom, uh, they have managed to create a very compelling option even for iPhone users out there who might be looking to escape Apple's uh, walled garden ecosystem. I think it's safe to say this is the way Android is meant to look and feel at its core. Also, did I mention this is about half the price of the Galaxy S23 and iPhone 14 coming at just $599. So that's been it. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and all that jazz. See ya.